631. Yes, you heard it. 631-672-3108 is the number to call. You're listening to The Sports Loudmouth. I'm your host, Errol Marks, my co-host, Speedy Petey. Go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Check out all our shows throughout the week, including The Loudmouth with me, Speedy Petey, and Sean Smith every single Wednesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. All you have to do to tune in and listen to our shows and check out our local listings is go to our website at www.worldwidesportsradio.com. Thank you to Derek for Let's Parlay. And now for the first time on our show, we are introducing and we are now talking to Carolina Panthers defensive lineman, Chris Warmly. Chris, what's up, buddy? What's going on, fellas? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. I mean, we got to make you smile. I mean, there's a lot to smile about. <laughs> Season's over. I mean, you get a chance to watch the Combine. You get to watch some of the next superstars. We have J.J. McCarthy. I, I mean, I, I mean, you're from the University of Michigan, so you should be excited. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh is back in the league. He's coaching the Chargers. Maybe you get a chance to play him this year. Who knows what happens? But anyways, how are you? How, how has the offseason been for you for the last couple of weeks? Uh, life's been good, man. Been back, uh, home with the family, uh, been able to enjoy some downtime. Got to watch some of the combine, uh, today. Um, you know, I think Michigan has the most players for many college this year. So there's a lot of guys that I get to tune in and watch. Um, so it's an exciting time right now. Obviously you kind of go, go about a, you know, a little less than a month from, uh, from the Super Bowl uh, with a little bit of a football law, but now you get back into it with, uh, you know, the combine, the draft, uh, free agencies, you know, getting, heating up here in the next couple of weeks so it's exciting time for uh, for football even though there aren't there aren't any games being played you're a young guy and you grew up in Toledo uh, Ohio it's a it's a different place of living uh, I mean Ohio is a you know, boring place to live I mean ask LeBron James but what is it like what, what is it like playing football over there how big is football over there in Ohio Ohio uh yeah I would, I would say Ohio is a top five top five state for high school football uh, it's a lot better than New York football where you guys are at. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but no, it was good, man. You know, it's a lot of, a lot of cornfields, a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, flat lands, not, not many beaches like you guys do in, uh, in Long Island, but, um, it was, it was cool. It was cool to, you know, be raised there and, and to grow up there. Um, going to Michigan was a little tough, uh, being from Ohio, got a lot of crap for that, but, um, you know, <laughs> made the right decision, I think in my mind, um, but uh, it's been good. Ohio's good right. to me. It's been have good you to been me. to Long Island? Have you checked out the beaches over here? <laughs> no, I have. Uh, one, of, one of my good buddies from college is from Long Island, and uh, he hypes it up pretty good. So right. I got to make it out there one time. Listen, you got to come out here. We'll show you around. There's beautiful wineries. The summer. I am not a big fan of the heat. Okay, I hate. I hate the heat. This weather, sure. 45, 46 degrees. My kind of weather, man. I, it's just me. But we have beautiful weather over here. I mean, there's beautiful women i know you're probably married and you know i so i'm, I'm going married to two girls man two kids right. so i'm i'm gonna stay i'm gonna stay close bring your wife and your kids yeah. she'll, she'll enjoy the wineries yeah wine, fire island have you ever been to fire island i mean never never it, heard of it. it it is beautiful you, you take a ferry over there there's beautiful beaches beautiful clubs and you know for all you know grown-ups and kids and all this other stuff so there's a lot to do over here in long island i think you really should check it out but yeah you're you're, uh, you're, you're selling me you're selling me uh, listen i could sell you more man i could sell you more i mean there, our sports teams absolutely blow but you know okay. I mean, if you're coming to watch the jets or the giants good luck if you're coming to watch the rangers and the islanders at least you have the rangers and the knicks are playing great basketball but the nets look like a, a peewee basketball team so uh yeah our our sports are just perfect and, and you're right uh, we are in New York, New York college, uh, New York high school football isn't the best, but New Jersey football is pretty good over here. So, uh, we have some good football players that come out of here, the, the tri-state area, right? Speedy. I would say so. So I wanted to ask you, uh, you mentioned uh, the rivalries of, uh, the, the rivalries of you playing at Michigan. You also played with, uh, two rivals of the Ohio football teams, the Ravens and the Steelers, and two of which have, uh, yeah. iconic coaches for this era, John Harbaugh and Mike Tomlin. Like what are some of the big differences with their coaching styles? Um, I would say both are, both are great. I was very fortunate to be drafted to, to Baltimore. Uh, and then I was, uh, traded, traded from, from, uh, Baltimore to Pittsburgh, only the second player in the, uh, in, in the history of the Ravens and, and Steelers to be traded, uh, amongst each other. Um, but like I said, I was very fortunate to be drafted by, by Harbaugh and, and the Ravens and Harbaugh is very, um, he's a great coach. I think he's very, uh, he likes things to go his way. Um, he's very, uh, 
stuck in his ways when it comes to how he wants things done, which is fine. It's it's worked for him, and and I, I learned a lot of discipline and and uh, hard work from him. And Tomlin is is definitely more of a player's coach. Um, both great in their own respects, um, and and I learned a lot from playing from both of them. Um, but I think as I get older, uh, I, I lean towards being being around Tomlin a little more. Uh, once I kind of got the understanding of the NFL, how it's how it's ran, how how you should conduct yourself day in and day out, especially on game days, um, I leaned a little bit more towards uh, Coach Tomlin's coaching style. We are talking to Carolina Panthers defensive lineman Chris Warmly. You know, Chris, your Michigan Wolverines won a national champion championship finally. Jim Harbaugh goes to the NFL. Where were you at the time when the Wolverines won their first national championship in a very long time? Man, I was I was driving back home from from Charlotte back to Michigan. Uh, had a little issue with my U-Haul trailer on the way back in the middle of uh, West Virginia, so I uh, just <laughs> caught it on the radio for the for the whole game. I thought I was going to make it back in time for the second half, and uh, got got a little sidetracked in in the middle of West Virginia. So uh, watched it or listened to it uh, on the radio. Um, incredibly happy for the guys. Um, couldn't have happened to a better group of guys. And um, excited for for Jim and what he did and what he had to go through to get to that point. Um, I played for him my last two years at Michigan, um, and to see where he took that program to where it was when we were five and seven in 2014 to ten years later, uh, a national championship. Um, it's pretty special, not just for those players and the coaches there, but um, everyone who has played uh, for the winged helmet. So Jim Harbaugh now transitions back to the NFL. What do you think uh, the second time around his coaching style will be like from what he's done at Michigan to now in comparison to what he did with the 49ers? Yeah, I think a lot has changed in 10 years since he's been in the NFL. Obviously, he was very successful with the 49ers, NFC championships. I uh, went to the Super Bowl and lost to his brother um, back in, I think, 2012. Yep. Um, but he's, he's seen the transition from um, – obviously the NFL to the to the college and now college back to the NFL. But there are so many things over these last even really two or three years in college that have made it seem more like the NFL with NIL um, and what those guys are coming in from high school uh, expecting. And now he gets to transition to, um, you know, what those top guys, those top rookies are, are looking for uh, when he, when they get to the NFL. Um, he's going to have a little less control when he gets back to the NFL. Uh, I think he enjoyed that control uh when he was at michigan um but these are these are these are grown men now a lot of guys have mortgages and, and car payments and, and families and and uh private schools they got to pay for so they're not going to be looking for uh for a babysitter they're going to look for a coach who's who's had a lot of success and a coach who uh, knows how to win and i think that's i think that's with uh that's going to happen with jim obviously they have a great quarterback in herbert and uh to have a offensive minded coach now with with harbaugh i think it's going to be a um a pretty nice duo with those guys for a long time. Chris, there was a lot of questions this year for the Carolina Panthers and the coaching. I thought Frank Wright was going to be a coach for there, there for a very, very long time. And something happened. Uh, some people said he lost the locker room. Some people said he wasn't getting along with certain players. Some people said that the coaching staff weren't see eye to eye. I mean, obviously, I know you don't want to throw your team under the bus. Was there something going on that nobody knows about with the Carolina Panthers on why Frank Wright was let go? Uh, I mean, I think bottom line is we sucked. <laughs> we <laughs> we went two and fifteen, and uh, that that's on the players, that's on the coaches, that's on you know the front office, that's on on everybody that was involved in the organization. Um, and when you have an owner like like Mr. Tepper who uh, wants results really fast. Um, and who's been successful uh, in every other venture of his life? Um, it's kind of like a put up or shut up type of uh, of business. And that's and that's the NFL in general. Um, I think um, if I was a head coach, I would have liked to see myself uh, stick it out for at least the year. Um, but those are those are tough decisions you have to make as an owner and as a front office. Um, I don't know if it was necessarily one thing that stuck out that was like, hey, we got to fire this dude. Um, Cause like I said, going two and 15, there's, there are so many different issues and things that go wrong within uh, a season that um, it's hard to be like, Oh, you know uh, the receivers weren't catching the ball or the defensive line weren't getting sacks uh, or Frank Wright wasn't calling the right plays. It, it was, um, you know, a list of things that went wrong going two and 15. And when you're the head guy, you usually um, take the brunt of it and, and take most of the blame. 
So Brian Burns and Derek Brown both had tremendous years. It kind of went under the radar because of, like you said, just the team struggling as a whole. So a lot of people forgot about them. Now they both have uh, big offseason decisions to make, and the Panthers have big offseason decisions to make. What are they like as teammates for one? And number two, what do you think they are worth like in the free agency market or <laughs> with the Panthers? <laughs> yeah, um, two great players. Two great players that I know um, want to stay in, in Carolina. I know the fans want them to stay in Carolina. Um, if I go back there next year, I want, I want to be able to play alongside those guys because those guys are great up and coming players who have been ascending for the last four and four and five years. Um, if you're putting a dollar amount on those guys, the, uh, the salary cap just, just went up by $30 million. Um, so I know their agents are, are talking to the, to, to Dan Morgan, who's the new GM, uh, and, and trying to, trying to work out deals, um, especially before free agency opens up. Um, but it's going to be, it's going to be exciting to see what they do. Um, Brian obviously can do it all, really. He gets sacks, uh, can rush the passer. He can get tackles for loss. He can set the edge. Derek Brown is a force in the middle. He set the NFL record uh, for D tackles with the most tackles this year. Um, and two guys who are very durable and can play 90% of the snaps. Um, so I think their value is going to be uh, – I think they put their value out there the last couple seasons and, and what they should be paid. Um, and I'm excited to see them to get, get, what all, get everything that they deserve. We are talking to Carolina Panthers defensive lineman, Chris Warmly. You know, Chris, everybody throughout the season, we're taking shots at Bryce Young. I mean, obviously, the Carolina Panthers move up. They they bring in Bryce Young. There were some questions about C.J. Stroud winning rookie, offensive rookie of the year. And Bryce Young really has taken the brunt. And a lot of people have been throwing him uh, throwing him under the bus. Not your team, but everybody else. I've been throwing him under the bus. He's too small. He doesn't fit in the NFL. He doesn't. His body type doesn't fit in the NFL. What could you tell us about Bryce Young that other people don't know? And tell us why you believe Bryce Young could be a star in this league. Uh, I think first and foremost, he's a hell of a leader. Um, he was a captain this year. And normally rookies, they, they're they told to uh, be seen and not heard. And um, he had to step up and uh, voice his opinions on some things. He had to step up and uh, – speak up when mo most of the time or sometimes you're not you're, you really are like I said you're supposed to just be seen and not heard um, obviously the season didn't go the way he wanted or really the whole organization wanted um, but I, I have confidence in him um, to have a better year next year I'm, I'm excited for uh, for the Panthers to bring in some pieces around him to to help him uh, grow and mature and, and uh, build build around him because he's going to be around for at least two or three more years um, you, you trade up uh, you give away a couple first round picks, you trade, um, you know, DJ Moore, Christian McCaffrey's gone. Uh, he wasn't a part of that trade, but you look at the, the pieces that they had this year. Um, and I know they're going to be looking to, uh, to build around him. I'm excited to see what they can do, um, in this next month or so of free agency. Um, and you know, another year of, of an off season with, with the team, obviously it's a new head coach. So trying to learn that playbook, uh, for Bryce is going to be another challenge, but he's a smart kid. Um, but I know another year uh, under the belt of just figuring out the NFL world um, is going to do him some good, and uh, I'm excited for him. So a comment and a question from our comment section. Uh, John says, since you're in North Carolina now, you, you should visit the Biltmore, he says. And uh, <laughs> one of our fans, Carl, who's a Michigan fan, asks, uh, if, you, if NIL was around when you were in college at Michigan, what Ann Arbor restaurant would you want to have a deal with? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I've never, first of all, I've never heard of Biltmore. Uh, so I got to check that back out when I, when I get back to, uh, to Charlotte, um, unless it's like a strip club or something, I gotta, gotta stay out of there. <laughs> you didn't specify, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, maybe I'll do my research before I, before He's I dive married. in. And... <laughs> I flew my, I, I got myself into trouble. He's married. He has two kids. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but if, uh, if I had NIL, there's this place called Frida Batitos. Um, it's a Cuban inspired, uh, uh, really burger joint in Ann Arbor. And it's uh, it's my all time favorite restaurant um that i've been to um it's not the prettiest place to have uh picnic benches inside for seating um, but <laughs> phenomenal food phenomenal drinks um i would have i would have begged to uh to get an nil deal with them you know chris you look at your position defensive line and there's a lot of good defensive linemen that have been waived this off season and and now you're looking for a job is there a particular team if not carolina you would like to play for a coach that you would like to play for um, I man, I would, I would, I would love to go back to Pittsburgh. I spent three seasons there and uh, tore my ACL at the end of my third year there in 2022, 
And uh, would, would love to go back there and finish out my career if, if it's not for Charlotte and, and the Panthers. Um, also, we wouldn't mind spending the next couple of years out in, out in Los Angeles with Harbaugh. Um, good weather, uh, a good team. I think they need some pieces on the defensive side of the ball and, uh, and, and offensive line to get things really going for Herbert. Um, I would also love to stay, stay – since I live in Michigan now in the offseasons, I'd love to play for the Lions. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a great thing going. I grew up in Toledo, so the Lions were always on TV growing up, and uh, it, was, it was sad times. I wasn't even a Lions fan growing up because of how poor they were. Um, <laughs> and now seeing what they've built over the last two years, two, three years with Dan Campbell um, and those young guys that they have around them, um, the young piece that they have, it's it's an exciting time in, in Detroit in the state of Michigan, and I'd love to be a part of that as well. Um, but honestly, at the end of the day, whoever's writing my checks, I'm, I'll play for. Um, but if I, had, if I had to choose and I was – If I was a GM of a team, I would say those four teams for sure. I will say this. I didn't hear anything with the Jets, okay? I'm a Jet fan. I'm a sad Jet fan, so I didn't hear it. The Lions. He mentioned the Lions, a team that actually is coming out of the woodwork after this year and Dan Campbell and and what we've seen with Laporta and and, and Gibbs and and St. Brown and all the talent that they have over there. Not the New York Jets. Oh, no, 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 no. New York is not the place I want to go. I want to go back to Carolina, Pittsburgh, L.A., or Detroit. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he said Detroit over New York. Chris. Listen, I'm, I'm a Midwest guy. Uh, I live I live 45 minutes from Detroit now. I wouldn't have to move. My my daughter could go to school there. I'm not going to hate stay, you. Stay in school I'm like, here. I love you, man. I love you. I just I'm just I'm hurt. I'm hurt. The you know? uh, I, I, listen. I, I visit I visit New York. I got two good buddies that live there. The food's phenomenal. Oh, it's the, the best. Uh, Can't lie about that. The city's phenomenal. It gives me a little anxiety if I stay there longer than 48 hours. <laughs> uh, so I might have to might have to live in Jersey and just take the the bridges over uh for dinner every once in a while but new york's a great city like i said whoever's writing my checks uh, i'm the biggest fan of um all right, all right. i'm I gonna, would, I'm gonna make mind. a pitch for you i'm gonna make a pitch for you okay i'm listening yeah, yeah woody johnson <laughs> woody you got one hell of a first name man and uh, i don't know if you have a woody and if you do have a woody Maybe you should take your Woody out and write a check to Chris Warmly, okay? We need some def- defensive line help. It seems like every single defensive lineman we bring in free agency can't stay healthy. Chris Warmly is the guy. He doesn't have a tear in his ACL anymore. No Achilles problem. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He's an ex-Michigan Wolverine, as we know Carl loves them. And uh, listen, it's not Jimmy. We have a guy named Robert, and he is Salah. He's Salahing or selling, Speedy, selling away. I mean, seriously, Chris Warmly, you are fantastic. You agree. Have you done this before? Uh, I had a podcast back in the day when I was in Pittsburgh with uh, some some local Pittsburgh uh, guys, some Yinzers, as we like to call them. And uh, it was fun, man. Love loved talking sports, love talking about ball. So, uh, Okay, yeah. let me ask you a question. What was your favorite sport after football? When you were a kid, uh, like playing or watching? Watching. Uh, probably basketball. Who's your favorite team? Growing up, it was the Pistons. The uh, Pistons. You're I grew up with like Ben Wallace, Rasheed Wallace, Chauncey Billups, Rip Hamilton, Tayshawn Prince. Those, that's when I started really getting into football or basketball. Um, my favorite player of all time is Shaq. Uh, yeah. At one time, I was always the tallest kid, and uh, watching him and Kobe. You know, when I was real little, um, was awesome. Obviously, a fan of Kobe as well. Um, being from Ohio, not the biggest LeBron fan, which a lot of people are shocked at. But he, he would always, when when LeBron was coming up with the Cavs, his first stint with them, he would always beat the Pistons, and they would have battles back and forth in the playoffs. So I I despised him. Like I was like, you know, I, I wanted the Pistons to win. I wanted them to to continue winning championships. And LeBron kind of threw a threw a dagger in that. And uh, kind of really broke them up, and now we've seen what what the Pistons have been for the last 15 years or so. It's uh, it's been pretty sad. I, I want to before, and we're going to introduce somebody because this guy is also a guy that's been on our show quite a few times. He attacks me, but I think no, no. you know who he is. He played in the NFL. Okay, I'm going to introduce him. I'm going to bring him in right now. 
So Chris Warmly can introduce himself. I'm sure our friend Pete Bursick knows who Chris Warmly is. <laughs> Pete Bursick, what, what is going on, my friend? Nothing. How are you? Oh, you look so happy to talk oh, to me. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, you know, I was, in Indi- I was in Indianapolis for the last, what, three days or two days, whatever, and <laughs> just got back today. So what do you want to know? You want to? Okay. What do you want to know? What do you want to know? What do you want me? me what, what, before, before we have Chris warmly on. Okay. Hi, Chris. How are you? I apologize. I are hate okay? to. Unfortunately, I got to meet you under these circumstances, but that's okay. That's all right. <laughs> these, these are these are good guys, man. They're good guys. No, I know they are. I know. Pete, I want you to do me a favor here. I want sure. you to pitch your Minnesota Vikings to Chris warmly. Go ahead, pitch him. How, in what way? <laughs> He's a defensive lineman. You guys need some defensive <laughs> line help. Come oh, on. you know what? Let me let me say this. Let me say this. I don't know. I don't know if you know Brian Flores or not, oh, yeah. or how well yeah, you yeah. know if you're familiar with the scheme. Um, I so I've been. I mean, I've been around. I played in the league, coached in the league. This is my almost my my 29th year, or whatever. I don't think I've ever seen a system that is more friendly to defensive linemen, especially interior defensive lineman 100 percent. with all of the guys that we walk up on you know walk up on the line of scrimmage it's just so hard for teams to double team because you know this and in, in a lot of the five in a lot of the five band fronts and teams want to play cover two behind it so you're short in the run so what's means what does that mean it means everybody up front's got a two gap right yep. you got to hold up you got to hold up against the double teams and you know first second quarter that's fine but third and fourth quarter it wears you you know it, it's tough but if there's a spot, I think if I was a defensive tackle, and regardless of money, regardless of weather, regardless of <laughs> all that kind they, of they stuff, play the dome. It's okay. There's a dome there. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're good. So it, it it's I think it's just a fabulous place. Um, I mean, I um, yeah, I'm not I'm not uh, Rob Brzezinski, so I'm not going to sit here and you know talk about the facility. I mean, the stadium's unbelievable. The facilities yeah. are unbelievable. Rated number two on the uh, player survey. Um, we barely, I think they barely got, I can't remember who beat them out, but, Miami. Uh, oh, Miami, Miami. Cause it's Miami and there's yeah. no state income hard tax. To beat. Hard to beat. Right. No, hard I, was, to beat uh, Miami. I, had, I had the, uh, I was fortunate to be with Brian Flores for a year in Pittsburgh. Um, after he got let go from uh, Miami, yeah. uh, Tomlin brought him in as our linebackers coach. And we were, I think we were 32nd in the league in 2021 in the, in, in, uh, in the run game, stopping the yeah. run. And uh, he came in and implemented a lot of stuff, put his kind of footprint in, and uh um game plan game planning each week and he was obviously with the linebackers but was really heavily into uh gap fits and where we all fit and how we all play off of each other um and we went from like i said 32nd to i think at least the top 10 run stopping team in 2022 so it was um familiar with him familiar with how he wants things to be done and uh you know minneapolis doesn't scare me when it comes to cold and, and with and when it comes to you know again and so you talk about those guys up front but the guys right behind them too the linebackers I mean it, it's fun it's got to be a fun place to play because you're you know you're not you're not playing quarters all day long and just chasing crossing routes and mismatches and things you know it, it's you get to blitz quite a bit you get to get after the quarterback you get to be aggressive and and uh you know I I can't think of a better fit for you. So why don't we get the <laughs> so I can send the paperwork to you? Yeah, you, want me me fa- you want me to fax it over to you now? Yeah, or- two two weeks from now when free agency opens up, you, uh, <laughs> you send it over. I'll send you. I'll send you my email. However you want to do it, and we'll, we'll get it done. No. Uh, it'd be, it would be you awesome. Get it, would, here? it would be awesome. It would be awesome, though. Um, I think it, again with anyone with anyone in this league it, it, playing for Brian Flores, I think it'd be a treat. Um, oh yeah. You know, I, I got I was lucky I played for Tony Dungy, Monty Kiffin and um uh, Foge Fazio, guys like that. And and having having good coaching matters. It really it, it does. It's gonna extend your career, it's gonna make you a better player. Uh hopefully I you know, in the big picture, make you some more money. But um uh yeah, we, we, we made it we made a we made a big jump. I know listen, that's I'm not, a way better that's a way better listen, pitch than the Jets. I'm, I'm just saying, yeah, right. I'm, Don't I'm tell t- him that he's going to attack me the whole time. I'm talking Damn to him. The, I'm talking to him the way the way I, you you should talk to a player, not about 
you know, who's our starting quarterback and who's the guy that we can't – who's the guy we can't – Long Island and the winery Who can't we – we can't trade. Long Island – listen, you want to play for the Jets? Here's here's something for you. You're going to have – you're going to have 20 road games a year because you practice on Long Island. Do you realize how far of a drive and how long it takes to drive from Long Island out to New Jersey well, that, where you I, play your games? I, I live in the Midwest because I despise traffic. Yeah, okay. Well, that's you better take a look at the – look. pull out yeah. your Google Maps and go from the facility to the stadium, see how long that takes. I worked for a guy named Ted Cattrall, who was defense coordinator at the Jets, and he was telling about how when a game got out of hand either way. These are Jets fans, right, just like the guy right above me, just like him. (laughs) If the game was out of hand either way, you know, third, going into the fourth quarter, fans would just go because they want to beat the traffic through the tunnel. Oh, yeah. You know? So – don't worry, like our friend uh, Dion Dawkins said before, the Jets are a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> give us a little uh, Dion and, weirdo. I call and why, it Dion weirdo. <laughs> and why would you want to play for one of two teams in the NFL that only have two colors on their uniform? Oh, so that's Blue. the reason. Green and white. Why? Yeah, that's I'm, the reason. That's. A, I'm just saying. It is what it is. Listen, you know, you know what? Don't send a fax because Barry Sanders did that when he retired. Okay, it never worked. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I knew you liked that, Chris. <laughs> uh, I, I did see the uh, Deion Dawkins. I saw a couple clips of that. That guy's hilarious. That it is. It's he is fa- he is really really funny. But you know, it, it, it's so funny. I'm not going to pitch the Jets because there's nothing to pitch. I mean, we have a coach that doesn't know where he is half the time. We have an offensive coordinator <laughs> that doesn't know his ass from his tailbone. We have a quarterback, I mean, a backup quarterback or whatever he is, who wants to screw around with older ladies and doesn't know how to throw a football. We have a defense that shows up in the first half and doesn't show up in the second. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Wait, and on I thought, and I, hold on. I thought we were supposed to be pitching. I'm trying. Uh, he, I'm gave not up, he gave up 20 minutes ago. I uh, listen. Oh, right, I, I gave okay. up. I gave He's up. pitching. Why not to join the Jets? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, every single. And by the way, the Jets haven't made the playoffs in about 13 or 14 years. So it, it's definitely not a pitch, and it's not something that I really want to do or help you out. If you decide you want to go to the Jets, if you want to go to the Jets, hopefully they pay you a lot of money because you're going to need it. Because most of the time, you have guys like Nicole Hartman crying that he doesn't get enough playoff time. Playoff time. <laughs> So I, I, I mean, it, it, I, I don't know. I, I actually don't know with my team. I wonder sometimes why I became a Jet fan. See, see so. Pete, think of it this way. Michael Hardman leaked the, leaked the Jets plays to the Eagles or the uh, Chiefs. I'm like, eh, yeah, uh, we, we don't need to stop Yeah, that. he leaked the game. <laughs> we, we don't need to stop that. He, the Jets leaked, he leaked the plays, and the Jets had their best games against those two teams. What does that tell you about the New York Jets? Maybe they took it for granted. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Did. Uh, maybe it should just post it on YouTube before the game. Just All take right. pictures Chris, of before it. Before we let you go, Chris, before you, we let you go, I mean, who do you think dance is better, you or Pete? Oh, I, I have zero rhythm. Um, zero. Chris, zero. before you're on the show for the last time, I mean, what do you want? You want him to come back, don't you? <laughs> yes, of course. Right? I mean, this is part. This, this, it's probably him being on the show is probably part of his probation or something. There's some reason why he was forced to come on this show. And no, you're going to do that. You're going to do that. Kept up my, they kept blowing up my DMs, and I'm like, shit, I'll just uh, I'll, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me just get on the show before you know, they'll stop messaging me. Yeah, so so sh- sh- shut you guys up. Oh, oh, they didn't, oh, they didn't say, they didn't say like with me when they said, well, we got pictures, we've got, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, all this hush money payments and things like that. Oh, they didn't man. threaten to bring that out. No, they didn't send a fax to you. Not yet. <laughs> uh, I was looking for. I was, yeah, I was looking for the fax. Uh, good lord. Well, hey, listen, Chris, we love you, and we would love for you to come back on the show. You anytime, fantastic. fellas. Anytime. Great personality, you really are, and we really appreciate the time. Good luck on the off season, and wherever you go, we're a fan, and we will Thanks, stay fellas. in touch with you, buddy. Yeah, appreciate you guys. All right, see you in purple.